Hello again. We're moving on to something different. Well, it doesn't look like it. We still have a quadratic equation, but rather than solving for x, we're going to solve for what we call the vertex. Well, thing is, when we plot this, we get a parabola. A parabola, either opening up, opening down, or opening up. So we get something like this, or something like this. Well, when you're applying this to real life situations, often what we want to do is figure out the so-called vertex, this position this position. Depending again if it opens up or opens down. We'll talk about that in a second, whether it's a maximum position or minimum. So let's think. This is often used in things like projectile motion. When you take a ball, you throw it through the air. It goes through an arc, just like this. Maybe not as emphasized as this one. It might be more of a shallow arc like this, but there's still going to be a certain maximum height you reach. So often we want to know what that maximum height is. I don't want to know where I threw it from and where it lands as much because eh, it's something I probably know already. I want to know the maximum height I'll hit. So we need the so-called vertex. Let's look at how to solve that. We're going to see, to do that, we do what we call completing the square, putting the equation into vertex form. You might hear both things. Or you might be asked to solve the max or min, and then asked to determine if it is a max or min. We'll look at that part last. But Completing the square, putting it in a vertex form, really mean the same thing. And we're going to see that allows us to determine the max or min position. The vertex is the max position, or min position, depending on the case. Great. So, what do we got? We have the equation x squared minus 6x plus 4 equaling 0. Got to put this into vertex form. Completing the square means we're going to try and make a perfect square out of this first part. We're actually kind of ignoring the plus 4. So what we're going to do is focus on this x squared minus 6x part. We still have the plus 4 out here. Putting it in brackets to emphasize that. And when we look at the next video, we'll have a more complicated case where the term in front of the x isn't 1. So we've got to make this into a perfect square somehow. Well. It's a nice trick for that. I'm going to switch colors again. And over here, what we're going to do is look at this term right here, the b in our quadratic. And what we want to do is take that and do the b divided by 2 squared. As always, you're going to hopefully see there's a method to my madness. So we want to do, in our case, minus 6 divided by 2 all squared. Or in other words, minus 3 squared, which is 9. We have this 9. What are we going to do with that? We're actually going to add in 9 here. And of course, we're adding 9 to this side of the equation. We have to add it to that side as well. So great. x squared minus 6x. And we're going to even add it in plus 9 in the bracket. Plus 4 equals, well, we added plus 9 on this side. Okay. So why did we do this? This is what we call a perfect square. So what does that mean? Well, we can find that we could factor this to be x minus 3. See that right there, the minus 3 in the squared after we divide it by 2? That will be this. This is going to work every time. Every time we want to complete the square, this is what we do. We take that b term, divide it by 2. That will give us what's going to go in the brackets. And then when we square it, that's what we're adding to both sides. Not so bad, hopefully. Of course, we have to square it. And again, if you don't believe me, check this out. Expand this out. Make sure you get this. If you don't, maybe I made a mistake. I didn't. Pretty confident about that. But we still have plus 4 here. And actually, we don't want this plus 9 on that side. We want 0 on this side. So we're going to have to subtract 9 from both sides while we were doing this. So minus 9 all equals 0. This is still x minus 3 squared. And now minus 5 all equals 0. This was completing the square. This was putting into vertex form. So what does this tell us? How do we get the vertex? We read it off. That's the beauty of this. The vertex is this number. This is our x coordinate, except we have to multiply by a negative. So our vertex is 3 and minus 5. This one gets multiplied by a negative. This doesn't. 
That's our x coordinate. So if we're talking about projectile motion, how far in this direction? This would be, in our case, 3 to the maximum. Probably drawn this kind of poorly. And the thing in this case, it's minus 5. Minus 5. So that would actually be more of a kind of drew this the wrong way. In our case, you can think minus 5. Oh, so it must be going down. So 3 over, 5 down. Whatever we're graphing here, that's what would happen. So, what is this? Is it, in this case, when I draw it out, logically I can figure out it must be a minimum point. But maybe I don't want to have to draw out the scenario. And again, this is kind of a hokey drawing anyway. How do I know if this was a max or min problem? Because you're going to be asked that all the time. Find the max and min. Great. Well, we found it. How do we know if it's a maximum or minimum? Look at our form right here. This is our vertex form. If this is a positive right here, it's going to be a minimum. If this was a negative, it would be a maximum. That's it. This determines if it's positive, it opens down like this case and this case. If it was a negative, it would open, or sorry, it would open down if it's negative, and it would open up if it's positive. So this is the case if it was negative, and you'd have a maximum. But in our case, it's a plus, so it opens up and it's a minimum. And that's it. This is vertex form, leading a square. This is our vertex, which in our case is a minimum because we know that it's plus in front here and thus opens up. We'll look at another case in a second.